Hello and welcome to Mikia. Today I am doing a another of my soap bottles, um, soap dispensers, because September is um, the challenge is in through or on the bathroom, <laughs> and of course a soap dispenser goes in the bathroom. Now we have a separate toilet with a hand basin as well as the bathroom. So um, I said to Glenn, I could do two soap dispensers and $1.98. But because it was Father's Day, they were half pricing the clearance price. So it was 98 cents for um, for, for, for each of these. Now... This is ceramic and it's going in the bathroom. So I'm going to use the porcelain paint, Pabo, Pabo Porcelain 150. Uh, this is when you bake it, it becomes dishwasher safe. So my assumption, and I may be making it an ass of you and me, but my assumption is if it's dishwasher safe, it's bathroom safe. So that's what I'm using today. Um, <clears throat> I have, I spoke to my husband and he, and I said, what colours do you want on this one? And he said, well, I really like this mug here. And this one was done from the original tester pack that I had. Um, and it was done with blue, red, white, and a little bit of green. Now, I don't have any green at the moment, so I'm going for blue, red. This is a different color red to what was in that, so it will come out different. And I'm going to put yellow in it. Now, if I put the yellow next to the blue, we should get a little bit, bit of green. So that's the target. Let's see what gets created, because you can never quite assume what's going to get created with acrylic pouring because the paint gets to contribute it has part to play in it now as you saw in in my mug doo -boo -boo, i got cells and cells are very awesome um and i do like having the cells in it so i will be putting some silicon in i use silicon durex play perfect glide it's the black and pink bottle Reason why it's black and pink, the black and pink bottle, not the green bottle, is this one is 100% dimethicone, which is what we want. The other one has all sorts of really good skin products in it, like aloe vera and stuff. But this isn't for the skin, this is for the cells. So we've got an oil-based lubricant um, and water-based paints and that's what creates the cells so let's go ahead and get this all prepared first of course we're going to get rid of the stickers because i'm not pouring over the stickers i'm going to wipe this down with some alcohol just to get the last of the sticky off as well as any shop grime because i can already see it's dirty uh, and then I'm going to mount it on, this is, a, this is one of the tester pots, like the tester pots that came in the pack, <laughs> this pack here, were 20 ml bottles. These ones I'm using here, which are the full size ones, are 45 ml bo bottles, or one and a half ounce. So what I've done is I've cut the top off this bottle it's a nice and sturdy strong bottle and the cool thing is check that out it's going to give me a base to pour on so I'm going to pour from the bottom and let it run and hopefully we'll get something funky um, I don't have to worry about a lip like I do with mugs, which is why I normally pour from the top down on a mug. Um, 
hopefully the paint will hit this bottle and run down onto this lid and I can then save it back and use it for something else. Um, one of the things that you need to be aware of when doing this stuff with the porcelain paint, it is um, transparent and it is, um, so when you get the, <clears throat> when you do the silicon and get the cells, quite often it will go all the way down to, I can get my lid off my alcohol bottle, um, I'm just using isopropyl alcohol just to do this, but what it will do is, um, Go all the way down to the colour of the porcelain, whatever you're pouring on. And so from that you need to be aware of what colours you choose to put on what. Um, I did a red mug, the other was started off red, so I chose not to put a purpley pink colour into the mix because I decided that wasn't going to look how I wanted it to look. So, um, just give that a dry rub down. Yay! All right. So, I've got this sitting on an upside down glass Lazy Susan. And the reason it's upside down is because it's then it's got this tiny little ring rather than dealing with a giant thing which I could knock over and stuff. It's nice and stable. And then I've put just the lid of a container on top to catch the drips. Um, my target being that, because this style of painting, there's quite a bit of runoff and this paint's quite expensive. So... I would rather have some runoff caught and kept for use elsewhere. You can, if you look some of, at some of my previous videos, you can um, dip cabochons into your paint, um, what, what runs off, and get some quite funky, where's my camera, there it is, there it is, get some quite funky looking glass cabochons which you could then mount into pendants or wire wrap or whatever and because this is designed to be baked you could bake it it's then waterproof stuck to your glass have fun with it but I don't have any cabochons left so I'm gonna save the paint for something else um, so what we need next is a vessel, a vessel to pour the paint from. <clears throat> now, what I found in the past was that to do a standard size mug like the one I showed you at the beginning is about 20 milliliters required for that. Um, this I don't know, it kind of feels a bit bigger. Let me hold it next to it. Ooh, we're out of focus. There we go. It's, it is bigger. Just. So I'm going to go for a bit more. Um, it's yellow to start with, so just... <laughs> Why I said that. Um, what can I sit that on so you can see what I'm doing? Not high enough. Hello. There you go. There. Now you can see what I'm pouring. So the way that I have in the past added paint, added the silicon 
is by having a little stick, putting a drop of silicon on the stick, and then pouring the paint down over it. Uh, so, here we go, there's our silicon. I'm going to start off with a little bit of white in the bottom. Now, this paint comes pre pourable. Watch this. Yeep. Mm. I'm reaching across the camera. This is not such a good idea. Alright, now when I went to Spotlight to buy some more paint, they had it on special, which I was super excited about. Um, now, I don't know whether you could see that, but when I put the lids on last time I used these, I put the red lid on the yellow paint. So there's a slight bit of red in there, but that's okay because we're going to put red um, red in the mix anyway. Bum, 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 bum. I might need my next bottle of glue. Some red in there. Oh, I forgot the silicon. Oh, silly Billy. Silly, silly me. Now this shot glass is a 45 mil shot glass or one and a half liter basically the same size as these bottles um so the cool thing about that is that um they by knowing what size your bottle is you can really get a sense of how much paint you've got poured in and how much Um, and what else you desire to put in there so I might just put just a dribble of white back in a bit more white not much otherwise the white takes over and we've already got a white vessel that we're pouring onto um Bit more red hopefully that'll take on some of that silicon oh gonna pour some yellow at the back and then some more blue All right, so the decision that I need to make now is whether I'm going to try and get a full coverage on the on the bottle or whether I want it to have some run marks. I'm not hugely fussed on run marks to be honest. So what I'm going to do before I get started is just put some encouragement <laughs> around the bottom here just just to show it what to do really
Give it a little bit of paint. All right. Put that back in its little stand. Move this out of the way. And make sure that we're focused on the right bit. So, the cool thing about... There we go. The cool thing about... Um, using the lazy susan is as i pour i can turn it and you guys can see what's happening as long as i turn it the right way <laughs> last time i tried to do this i turned it the wrong way and you had to wait for it to come all the way around sorry so <clears throat> let's do i need to go that way It's a bit different having square corners. I haven't poured a square before. Hey, you're supposed to go round. Nope, it's not following my instructions at all. All right, I'm just going to pause there and say to it hey go that way I'm just rubbing my finger around and inviting the paint to run eek So I'm just picking up the paint that's dripped off onto the onto the ground and putting it back up onto the mug in the places where there isn't any paint flowed down. Just smearing it around a bit. You could start off doing this and give it a coat first. This is looking very dark. But I did put a lot of that blue in there. nearly all the way around that yellow and blue make quite a cool green look at that all right still reminding it to go around the corner okay Now, if we look in the pot, I 
it's mostly, from what I can see, blue. Although, there is some white at the very bottom. So I'm going to give it a quick riz around and see if I can add some more interesting stuff and hopefully add some more cover up on where I've used my finger and mushed it around a bit. As you get less and less in the pot, you've got to go slower and slower to let more and more out. So while that's dribbling, I like this side. This side's cool. So while that's dribbling, I'm going to, hopefully, if I could have got some, see if there's any cells going to come out. So... This is just a little creme brulee torch. And when I'm, what the cells are is where the silicon rises up through the layers of paint and comes up to the surface. So all I'm doing, and let's see if I can see how I'm, Nowhere near touching that paint with the torch, but there's enough heat coming through to bring out the silicon. Now, what happens is, because we're on a 3D surface and the paint is still running, those cells come out and then they stretch. So let's bring you in and give you a close-up of some of those cells. How cool does that look? Not quite so many on that side. Now the cells are a lot more obvious when the variation between the layers of the paint is obvious. So where the white is, um, they become really obvious because it's popping up and showing the darker color that's underneath. Look at this. Funky. Nobody else is going to have a soap dispenser like me. <laughs> uh, uh. And the cool thing is, if I get bored of one side, I can just turn it around. Something slightly different on another. Or maybe go from a red tinge to a bluey greeny tinge. How cool is that? I like it. What I have no idea is what it looks like underneath. 
Should we see if the camera can show us? All right, going down. Down, 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 down. Where is the camera there? Okay, camera, in you go. No, not enough light. Come on, focus. Focus. It doesn't want to focus, guys. Sorry. Oh, there we go. So there's what it's looking right underneath. Am I seeing a blank spot? Am I really? Ah, I don't want a blank spot. No, that's not what I want. Okay. Let me check. Yes, I am seeing a blank spot. That is not cool. Come on. Because the size of the bottle is roughly about the size of the, the size of this bottle down here is roughly about the same size as the lid that screws on. Now, this stuff takes about 24 hours to get a complete dry. They say to leave it for 24 hours before you bake it. But it tends to have stopped running by about an hour I found so pretty much what you get in an hour is gonna be what it's gonna look like that looks like a bit ghostly to me but turn it up the other way and what will it look like there's a hole in my paint I think it's fun and funky. That's what I think. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to lift it off this paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my little container that I've been saving my paint in and pick it up and scrape it into there. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not going to put you through that trauma and drama. No, it's not trauma and drama. Just long-winded. So there it is, guys. I like it like that. And how does it get any better? Remember, asking questions opens up possibilities. So what would it be like if you were to ask questions all the time about everything? How much more fun would you have? How much more creative could you be? And what else would be possible beyond what you imagined? <laughs> Only a few questions in there. All right, my darlings, I'm going to be back once this is dry and you get to see it. The thing is, I'll actually be in Tokyo when you get to see this. Because I'm going to an energetic dentistry class over there. So... I will see you, your time, in three, two, one. Guess what? This is how the painting I did on the live um, came out. Look at those cells. They've kind of gone wonky, but they still look cool. Um, and once I put the, the lid on it, it looks very funky um i like it i like it glenn likes it he really likes the uh the negative space he wants to call it start us calling it positive space please because it adds to the painting so it's positive <laughs> so there you go glenn's renaming it positive space so that's how that one came out glenn actually wants to just leave it as the one um one side done so 
that's his choice and we'll do that so now on to the video that you actually were watching <laughs> so here it is and I haven't even taken it off the bottle yet um, let's show you what it looks like up close and personal I really like this side probably because of the blue this quite sides quite funky it's very busy through here but it's quite funky this side's definitely a lot redder and not so fond of that side but that's okay the cool thing with these um, is that you can pick a side and that's the bit you can see so I'm just going to run my blade around and just make sure it doesn't rip the paint as it comes off. There we go. Oh, top looks pretty cool though. I'm not 100%. I think this one will be going where I see it most and this one will be where I don't see it much. <laughs> But, you know what, they are cool. I do like them. But as I said before, I'm more of a round girl. Um, so, even just the square box of the bottle doesn't appeal to me. But they were a dollar, so who cares. So, with the lid on, let's get it to go. There we go. So, with the lid on, that's what we see. Quite like that side. So I'm going to take these inside and bake them so that they become dishwasher safe. Once they're dishwasher safe, I'm pretty sure that they're bathroom safe. So that's my target. So with this Pavo paint, porcelain 150, this stuff. There's a link in the description if you want to buy some on Amazon or just get some more information about it. Um, the, you just bake it in your own oven at 150 degrees C or 300 degrees F for 35 minutes. And then it's dishwasher safe. If you come in really closely on this bit, it's really pretty. I like that. But it's just, you've got to get your nose right down onto the bench top to see it. <laughs> so there you are. Two soap dispensers. Ready to be painted on. Oh no, they've been painted on. Mm. Ready to have this soap put in them and create some magic. So how does it get any better than this? I adore you all. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in another video. Bye bye.